All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska by Chad uh, Hufford. How are you doing, Chad? I, I think you're actually the first one we've had from uh, Alaska. Not too many of us up here. Yeah, we <laughs> actually have less than one person per square mile in the state of Alaska. So it's right. a little, little more concentrated around Anchorage, but it's sure. it's a lot of wilderness up here. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably outnumbered by polar bears. <laughs> All right. And Chad is born and raised in uh, uh, Anchorage, Alaska, grew up in the financial industry, but with a strong background in athletics, nutrition and performance psychology. He is ranked as a top financial planner and Dave Ramsey's Smart Investor Pro brings a coaching mindset and the heart of a teacher to financial planning and investment. And Chad owns a boutique financial planning firm, Veritas Wealth Managers, which that manages $500 million and serves several hundred families across the US. And what we want to talk about today is, which I think is a really great subject, is about uh, becoming future focused. So when you talk, um, Chad, about becoming future focused, it doesn't mean just living in the future and ignoring, you know, like fantasizing about the future and just living in the f living in the future to the exclusion of what's going on in the present. <laughs> no, not at all. But it, what it is, is trying to make the future version of us a little bit more tangible because we are hardwired we are created and designed to live kind of in the moment and mm -hmm. to seek immediate gratification. But in order to build a, a good business, in order to build a healthy relationship, in order to build a healthy body, in order to build wealth, we need to be future focused. We need to be willing to sacrifice some things in the moment, delay some gratification so we can have a better life and a better future. Mm -hmm. But, but unfortunately, future us is, is a little intangible. We, we don't know future us. We have not met future us. So it can seem a, a little squishy. It's hard to measure what future us might want, like, and need. Um, but, but like many, many disciplines, it's being able to take something, what we're doing today and align it with where we want to be, who we want to become out there in the future, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. And I guess uh, uh, you, you just touched on it there. Unfortunately, we live in this, uh, we're hardwired for, for the present and instant gratification. We now live in a culture that celebrates instant gratification. Our phones and everything bombard us constantly. Everything is up. To, so how do you, uh, what advice would you give to people to be able to lift themselves out of that for a moment, to be able to even consider what the best version of themselves looks like or what the best future looks like to them? Because we're so distracted with all this nonsense. Agreed. And I think to your point, all the, the input, all the, the consumption that we have being inundated with news and content and all that, it very much keeps us in the presence. And, mm -hmm. and obviously we have to be present, sure. but we have to still balance that. And when we're constantly being barred by the now, it is even harder to look and think about what do I actually want the future to look like? And, and I think taking time out to, to have a vision, to create an idea of what we want that life to look like is so important, but we don't do it. So it, it isn't something that's going to naturally happen. Like sure. Human beings aren't naturally wired that way. So I think it's taking out intentional time to set some of those long-term goals and envision like what what would life look like if I didn't need my job if I was independently wealthy what would life look like if my health was better if my 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 relationships were better and design what we want that to look like because life is going to unfold either by yeah. des either by design or by default and I want to make sure for me and the people I love and care about it's the former that we yeah. are acting on a long-term strategy and not just reacting to the craziness around us. Yeah. And the, and it's a, and it's a really good point as well, though, about, uh, about the doing it, uh, by default or by design, because I think, I think the other part too is it, is a lot of people go through the motions every day, whether it's work or in their personal lives, and they and they don't really know why they're doing what they're doing. I mean, they do on a, you know, on an intellectual level here, but I'm working to make money to support my family. 
But ultimately, what am I doing? What's my purpose? What's my vision for the future? All of that. I mean, a lot of that tends to get shoved aside and then just the years roll by, right? Absolutely. And it's easy to kick all these things down the road, whether it's you know doing a will or yeah. getting on a budget. Like Those aren't typically emergencies. And if we switch gears, we look at putting a business plan together mm -hmm. or um, you know, getting in better shape, eating healthier. Mm -hmm. We can always kick that down the road another day, another week. But sometimes that turns into another year, another decade. And at some point, it does become urgent. So we want to get ahead of that and be proactive before it becomes an emergency. And to your question about you know connecting with the future, yeah, this, this isn't some sci-fi thing, but if we if we don't have a good connection to where we want to be in the future, good decisions in the moment feel like a cost rather mm -hmm. than an investment. Yeah. What, we, what we want is that to be an investment. And that goes far beyond money. I'm talking about, again, our health. I'm talking about the, the our jobs, our educations. If we are better connected with a specific design and a vision for the future, it's easier to make those sacrifices of delayed gratification. And it doesn't feel like a price that we're paying. It feels like an investment that we're making. Yeah, because I mean, most people would are most people would agree to say, you know, we're all on a journey of some kind, you know, both in our professional lives, our personal lives, our life and, you know, holistically, we're on a journey. But oftentimes, you know, people would say, yeah, I'm on a, yeah, I agree, we're on a journey. And they say, okay, where's your journey? Where, where are you headed? And they'd be like, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> because as you said, and the other thing too, is sometimes I think people get um, discouraged because they will sort of say, okay, here's where I want to go. Here's what I want to do. But they, and it's great to have audacious goals, but then they put them, it's, they're so far in the distance, they can't pull themselves back to look at the steps they need to get there. So they kind of get discouraged. Absolutely. And I think that's what keeps a lot of people from planning is mm -hmm. they, number one, I think some of us are afraid to dream. Like as little kids, we had no problem. We dressed mm -hmm. up as superheroes and all that stuff. We put on costumes, we pretended, and we we were not afraid to dream big. And at some point in our lives, pragmatism takes over, but it, there is a part of us I think is still able to dream. However, pragmatism often kills that off. And we, we, we think of maybe for a brief moment, what we might want in the future, then we start thinking of all the reasons why it won't happen. So. Part of our job from a financial standpoint, and this, again, you could apply these to any yeah. long-term goals, coming up with a vision for what you want your life to look like. One of the questions we ask, it would be like, John, if you did not need a paycheck, if you did not need to run a business, go to your job, what would you want your life to look like? Right. Not, not from a monetary standpoint, yeah. but a day-to-day. -day, like, Talk about your life. Like, let's, let's create some context around this vision. Then we then we attach some numbers to it, some goals like, OK, how much would this lifestyle cost? Would it be mm -hmm. hobbies, vacations? What would be what would be the purposeful pursuits that you're going to be going after? The things that still challenge you yeah. that that might cost some money. So we start attaching some money to these long term things and then we reverse engineer. Here's where it gets really powerful is someone might have a goal and we we run the financial numbers. We say, OK, John, in order for you to have the financial independence. That, that you desire, you're going to need to build about a $2 million investment portfolio over time to produce the income necessary to give mm -hmm. you independence from your paycheck. Yeah. If I just, if I just left it at that, that's overwhelming. Yeah. yeah I'm going to yeah. save $2 million. <laughs> so what we do, the next step then is to create a, a connection between that big, huge goal mm -hmm. and where you're at right now. So the goal might be accumulating, again, I just made these numbers up. Yeah, no, absolutely. Accumulating a net worth of a finite amount of number because we want it to be measurable, tangible, and finite. It's not about more, 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 more. Mm -hmm. But then back that into today and say, okay, John, based on what you've saved so far and your timeline, you need to save an additional, let's say it's $500 a month or whatever right. the number is. So we've done a couple different things. Just in that process right there, we've taken the, the future into the moment. So it isn't just future John's problem to deal with. Right, this. right. Because if you've got to save an extra $500 a month, it's, it's something you've got to worry about every single day this month. But here's the thing. You get to celebrate a victory this month if you've hit. It isn't about $2 million in 20 years now. Yeah. It's about saving $500 this month. 
The other thing that it does is it takes a big, huge goal, breaks it down to bite-sized chunks. So yeah. we've, we've made it meaningful into today. We've taken the future, made it meaningful today. And we've also taken that big goal and we've broken it down into something we can actually wrap our brains around. And you can do this with any goal. You just yeah. a health goal, business goal. It doesn't have to be a financial goal, but I think people need a blueprint. They need mm -hmm. something that connects where they are today in their actions, their sacrifices, their decisions, their choices today with those long-term goals and where they want to be and who they want to become. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fantastic. And those, you know, having those, uh, you know, having those milestones and steps if it's $500 a month or whatever, it allows you to, obviously you can see it, you can touch it, you can get there, you can celebrate it. Interesting thing you said there, I've had on the show a couple of times, uh, Ruben Gonzalez, who, uh, who actually did uh, luge in the in the Winter Olympics uh, for Argentina? He's I think he's been in four Winter Olympics. I think he's the oldest and been in the most. Anyway, but he said, you know what changed everything from for his um, his racing was he used to you know get on the luge and go flying down the course, you know, and obviously you're you're worrying about getting to the bottom as fast as you can until this German coach said to him one day he was looking at him said, no, your goal is to get to the first turn and to negotiate the first turn. And then your next goal is to negotiate the second turn. And once he started doing it turn by turn, his whole speed, and it's exactly what you, his whole speed increased and exactly what you're talking about. You know, I, I love that analogy. And I actually used to work with Olympic athletes, no no losers, which is right. interesting since I live in a place where it's snow and ice six months out yeah. of the year. But I used, we used to do that exact same thing. It's okay, here's the long-term goal. Maybe it was yeah. Olympics, maybe it yeah. was, uh, a mixed martial arts fight. Maybe it was, you know, getting drafted into the NFL, mm -hmm. whatever it was. But we, okay, what matters today? Yeah. Like we can't, we can't, that's, that's an outcome that we don't have complete control over. So what are the inputs today that we can leverage that nudge us closer to that long-term goal and make today as meaningful as possible? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we'll worry about tomorrow, but, and, and even though we're planning for the future, we still have to maximize the impact of today. Yeah. And and the other part, too, is uh, is identifying, you know, whether this is business or personal, but it's like in business, right? Um, we used to always say, like, there's, there's um, doing seminars, we used to sort of say, what is, a, what is the number one destroyer of homes in the U.S.? You know, and people, I'd say, is it fire? And people go, yeah, yeah, no, okay. no it's not. Is it is it wind? No, yeah, no, it's not. It's a flood? No. It, guess what? It's termites, right? Um, and the trouble with termites is, they're, they don't come in one day and just eat your whole house and it falls down. They do it over time. But there are expenses in your life and your business that are doing the same thing to you. So when you think you maybe don't have that 500 or you don't have that money in your business, really go start looking at where you have those hidden costs that are eating away at your business. Things fall apart very slowly and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden. Yep. And so it, that analogy, I actually really, really like that because it's often the slow, steady slide that gets us in trouble. It isn't, you know, from a financial standpoint, it, it usually isn't a medical emergency that mm -hmm. costs somebody $200,000 and they go bankrupt. It's the small spending habits that accumulate every single day that keep us from living within our means or neglecting to save a little bit out of our paycheck, mm -hmm. all those little things every day. And at some point, there's enough damage that things fall apart. And it seems like, you know, oh my goodness, you know, my financial life is just is, mm -hmm. is dumpster fire right now. It mm -hmm. didn't happen that day. It didn't happen the day before. It happened a little bit every day for maybe 10, 15, 20 years. And the termite <laughs> example is perfect because at some point the house collapses, but it's been slowly collapsing yes. for decades. Exactly. And again, that's in our health too. It isn't the day that somebody has a heart attack isn't the day that they neglected their health. Yeah. It was 15 years before that when they put in too much sugar, too much processed foods, not enough activity, and they got away with it one day at a time, one day at a time. But the termites slowly ate away at their health mm -hmm. until one day they couldn't get away with it anymore. And that's just how life goes. Yeah, no, and and absolutely. And and uh, these, these things things can just, you know, kill you in, in business. And I think the other thing too, and, and I guess this is, uh, this is another thing that you probably bump up against a lot, uh, Chad, you know, particularly, as you said, you've worked with athletes and all of that is, is just that, um, is just that 
belief system that we have that maybe it came from our childhood maybe it came maybe we ex, you know maybe we're kind of expecting to be poor because we've never had money or our families mm. have never money and we kind of have a we have a psychological block you know, I, I think the self self limiting beliefs are terrible because we we often end up writing that narrative out you know if we mm. believe that this thing either can't happen or the the bad thing will happen indefinitely anyway regardless of what we do we essentially come to a place of, of learned helplessness where mm. we end up following the path to the place we don't want to go because we figure that's where the path is going to end up anyway um that's where we're destined to be instead of fighting against it because i'm just going to use a little fitness analogy like mm. if if you believe john that you and you look like you take pretty good care of yourself but if you believe you were destined to die early of a heart attack, have diabetes, be overweight, you wouldn't even bother going to the gym and exercise. You wouldn't bother right. eat, eating kale and broccoli because you're like, what's the point? Yeah. I'm going to end up this way anyways. I might as well enjoy cheesecake today mm -hmm. if, if I'm going to die of a heart attack anyway. But people have to believe that there's a different outcome for them in their life, in their business, in their careers, and then get, start executing getting in alignment with that. And that's where having a plan, you know, we call it a financial blueprint. We're talking yeah. about building wealth, but yeah. having a plan that holds you accountable to your long-term goals. So you can see, am I on track? Am I doing, am I executing the thing today that keeps me in alignment with where I want to be in the future? And we, I think we need that for multiple yeah. areas of our life. Otherwise it's really easy for us to drift into what is convenient, what is comfortable, and that is almost never where we want to be in the long run. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I love what you said about that learned helplessness. I, I think that is so, so profound, absolutely profound. And and obviously the other part too, then, Chad, is oftentimes people aren't good at getting getting to their destinations on their own, right? They need some help. Even accountability. Some people aren't great at it. Well, we're, we all struggle with personal accountability on times. I, I won't push that on everyone else. I'll say we all do. Therefore, having somebody like you or a mentor, somebody, you know, having surrounded by people who only interest is in your success, right? They have no other baggage. You know, that's why sometimes it's better to have somebody like you than maybe a family member advising you, because at least you you come with no extra baggage. And and I think people need somebody that they can be real with. Yeah. It, there's there, like you said, there's no baggage, but people who maybe don't know. The things that they don't need to know they know the goal they know where somebody's at right now and accountability is absolutely huge mm -hmm. because a lot of times our knowledge outpaces our execution we right. we know a lot of things that we need to do that we just simply don't do because we're going to do them tomorrow or they're just too hard or maybe there's a shortcut for, for whatever reason i mean right now as we're recording this we're like middle of february i just came from the gym earlier sorry one more fitness analogy no you're good six weeks ago everybody was at the gym it was we, you know it was new year's yeah. everybody had their their um you know their their new workout plans they hadn't been in the gym in 10 years but they downloaded navy seal workout and that's what they're doing they're going to be the best shape of their life and everybody had goals to be a better person you know these new year's resolutions we're six weeks into the new year and a lot of people have already given up it wasn't because they didn't have a plan it wasn't because mm -hmm. they didn't have access is because they didn't have accountability. There wasn't somebody in their corner saying, you said this is what you wanted to do. Are you in alignment with that? Or I see you drifting here. And that's hard. Accountability yeah. is difficult, but it's necessary because we are hardwired to take the easy road. <laughs> the easy road. And as a coach, that's what you're doing is you are you're holding somebody accountable to that end result and, and asking them, you know, are you are you serving or are you stealing from the future version of yourself? Mm -hmm. And I, I have coaches. I don't think anybody is beyond that. I, no. I, I used to watch a guy growing up. His name was Michael Jordan. He was mm -hmm. pretty good at this basketball. Yeah, yeah, apparently. And even he had a coach. So yeah. if Michael Jordan had a coach. I certainly need a coach. We all need accountability because there's always days where we don't feel like doing the work. We don't feel like doing the hard thing. We need somebody in our corner with our best interests at heart saying, we're on this road together. Yeah. Let's yeah. do the hard thing. Yeah. And and like you said, I mean, find out the things that work for you because, you know, for instance, like, I mean, I do, I do martial arts and that works for me because I need 
to go somewhere and I need to be accountable to people like to my master, to my, you know, colleague, to my fellow students and all of that. If you left it completely, if I was just trying to go to the gym every day, I'd probably be less successful. But this is but I think it's you have to find you have to find the motivation or whatever works for you, whether it's somebody literally meeting you at the gym and saying, I'm going to meet you twice a week or three times a week and hold you accountable. But it's that you have to find what works for you. Yeah, you do. You absolutely do. And, you know, even in, in finance is a similar mm -hmm. thing. You know, there's a lot of ways that people have built wealth. Yeah. But but we've got to figure out a plan and strategy that works for us people to hold us accountable because the, the best plan in the world won't work at all if we don't do it. Yes. So there is a balance between how well does this work, but can I commit to it? And too often, whether it's in health, business, any, any, any long-term discipline, sometimes we try to optimize before we standardize. We try to make this plan perfect before we make it consistent. Mm -hmm. And a good plan consistently executed will work far better than a perfect plan that you're working for three weeks. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. As I would say, like, you know, you just plan out the best case scenario and then deal with the exceptions as they come up. Don't don't plan for all the exceptions because then you will have a, you know, you'll have a plan you never execute on. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, this has been great, Chad. Thank you so much for sharing today. All of Chad's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Well, we've already touched on a lot. I mean, the long and short of it, John, is we help people make sure they don't run out of money or purpose in retirement and identifying long-term goals, creating a roadmap to get them there. And as we just talked about, keeping them executing on their plan, on their financial objectives and on their investment strategy, even when they don't want to, when things get tough and ultimately just helping people build a more abundant life. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Chad. Thank you for watching and listening. And I recommend go check out Chad's work. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.